Okay, so I didn't really uh, touch on how to use the pentatonic scale a whole lot in the last video. I was mostly talking about how to play it, so the last video is more how to play it and this is how to use it. So, the first thing you want to do with the pentatonic scale, a lot of people when they get into situations either where they're playing along with a CD or a backing track or they're playing with a band or they're just playing by themselves or whatever, is they don't really know where the key is and they don't know how to find the key, they don't know where to go, they don't know, they know the pentatonic scale and they know how to use it and fool around with it but they don't know how to use it in context with another, with more um, music being played in the background. And my first suggestion is for those of you who don't know theory and don't know notes and aren't really, you know, um, theoretically sound in music, um, kind of get a basic understanding of where the notes are on the guitar. Not just a lot of people don't know where the different what the different notes are. They just they know they just know how to they know how to play the guitar just technique wise from reading tabs and stuff. Well, first of all, first thing to do is to kind of know the names of the strings. E, sorry, E A D G B E from low to high. So that's pretty basic. Most people know that obviously. Um, but once you got that, you want to know. How, the progression of notes all the way up to the 12th fret. This is really going to help you because when somebody shouts out the key, or when, when you know what key it's in, if you know it's in the key of C, but you just don't know where C is, well then you're lost. That's really not going to help you. So the important thing is to know where C is, or whatever key you're trying to find. Um, first way that you can do this is memorize the progression of notes. And to know, and obviously you'll know, you should know from a little bit of background in music, that we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It goes from A to G, and there's sharps and flats in there as well. There's two notes that don't have any sharps and two notes that don't have any flats. E, no, sorry, B doesn't have any sharps, and E doesn't have any sharps. Um, the two notes that don't have any flats, C doesn't have any flats, and F doesn't have any flats. So, the progression of notes, therefore, should go A, A sharp. B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and then back to A again. And it's the same thing with the flats, except the flats kind of go opposite. It's going to go A, B flat, B, C, D flat, D, E flat, E, F, G flat, G, and then A flat, and then back to A again. I'm sorry if I screwed that up somewhere in there, it's kind of hard to do. But, so once you know that, once you know that those progressions go, or how that progression goes, and I'll write that down in the description, um, you're going to go, you're going to start with the name of your string. And the biggest one to know is the low E string. You definitely want to know that one, because that's where your root note is going to be with the pentatonic scale. So if somebody shouts out as in the key of C, well you know that open E is E. So that's E. E doesn't have any sharps. So it goes E, F. F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and B doesn't have any sharps either, so it just goes straight to C. So that's where C is. C is at the eighth fret. So when next time somebody shouts out that the song's in the key of C, or you're just playing along with the backing track and you know it's in the key of C, or whatever you're doing, that's how you'll know where C is, or where whatever key you're doing. And so that's a really good thing to know. And once you know that, you can do it on every single one of the strings. You don't even need to memorize it. The only real thing you need to memorize is that the progression of notes goes from A to G. All the notes have sharps and flats and stuff, except for B, C, E, and F. Those are the only exceptions where they don't have any sharps and flats. And I'll write it down on the side so that you can uh, see that. So once you got that, that's one way to find out what key it's in and where to go. The next way that you can do if you're just stubborn and you don't want to learn uh, theory and memorize notes and all those different things like that. The only other suggestion I really have for you, and so, it's something I do too sometimes, is when you're listening to the song or playing with people or whatever, you try and find the key. You use your ear. Everybody has an ear. If you're playing music, you can use your ear to a certain degree to help you out and help find um, 
help figure out where notes are and help figure out where keys are as well. And a really good thing to do is to kind of just slide the note all the way up, or slide your finger all the way up to the 12th fret on the low E string and kind of hear where it, until it sounds good, until it sounds like it matches. And um, hopefully if your ear is good, that'll work. That's kind of a shot in the dark way to find out what key the song's in, but it, it is a way, and it's a way that works for me. Um, but it really only works if you, if you have a pretty good ear. So hopefully if your ear's good enough, you can kind of use that sliding up and just listening until it sounds good, until you think you found the key, and then just go for it. So, um, like I said, it's a shot in the dark, but it is a way. But I would really suggest learning the names of your notes in this, on, on every single string, or at least learning the, that little cycle of notes that I was going through with A to G and all that stuff. The next thing that you want to really focus on when you're soloing with the pentatonic scale is note selection. And usually when you're playing the pentatonic scale, it's over a progression, it's pretty simple. Let's use the key of C, because we were always talking about it. Usually it's something like this. Something like that. So, it's just a 1-4-5 progression. Or a simple like 12 bar blues, whatever, or you know, a standard rock song like that and you really want to kind of listen to the chords that are being played because if you just kind of go through the notes and play um, note by note by note and just go through randomly picking the notes that you want to pick um, it'll sound good to a certain degree but it's not you're not gonna have that real you're not gonna really get the essence of the chord progression you really want to hear the way each chord sounds and the root note of each chord and you want to try and land on that. So if the guys, if if the rhythm guitar player, the bass player, the music's on the C, the the root chord of the song, your notes are going to kind of. You want to riff, and you kind of want to land on an octave of that root. Sorry. Those are the notes you want to land on. When you're on, when the song or the whatever you're playing with is on the next chord, or the on the four chord, you kind of want to land on those octave, the notes of that octave. Sorry, so that's on the uh, on the A string or the fifth string with the uh, so if we're playing at C, it's at the eighth fret. Your notes kind of want to land there, so the octave of that, so which would be there on the G string at the uh, 10th fret. And then when you go back to the root again, you want to go back to the root. And so you kind of follow the chord progression around a little bit. You don't need to do it every single time, but you do it once in a while just to kind of emphasize where the chord progression is going. And it just kind of gives it a little bit more direction and it gives it a little bit more um, oneness or a one or more of a whole feel to the uh, um, to the whatever you're playing with whether you know band or uh, backing track or CD or whatever um, and the only other thing that we can I can really touch on with soloing is um, spacing your notes out and leaving some air to breathe sometimes people solo way too fast especially with blues and stuff um, or sorry not with blues all kinds of different styles, just people play too fast in general in my opinion. But um, So you don't want to be rushing through all the time. Speed is good every once in a while, but you don't want to be playing too fast all the time. You want to slow it down a little bit, choose your notes carefully, leave some space, try to keep it dynamic, volumes up and down, um, using different techniques and bends and vibrato slides, pull-offs, everything, all stuff like that. You really want to use that. And then the last thing that you can really do, learn a couple solos. If you're using the pentatonic scale, guys like Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, who else? Pretty much everybody uses the pentatonic scale, but you know those heavy blue, blues guys like that, those are really good guys to get into when you're uh, wanting to learn some riffs and stuff. So I would suggest learning a couple solos um, by those guys from songs that you like. You'll get some ideas and some riffs and totally just steal their stuff and just use it the way you want to use it. Um, so there's some tips for you and move on to the next video. So thanks. Good luck.